CV is one of the most important parameters in a control valve and CV in simple terms is basically the flow capacity at standard conditions. Why is this important? Because this helps us to have comparison between various kind of valves, process conditions, etc. Let's take an example to understand it. So let's have two lines with us. Now they tell me the CV of this line. Will the 10 inch line have a higher CV or 5 inch line will have a higher CV? The answer is very apparent. It is going to be the 10 inch line because the flow capacity of 10 inch line is far higher as compared to 5 inch line. It is not so simple with valves. Two valves might look very similar but the CV can help us to understand that the valve with a CV of 60 will have a higher flow capacity compared to a valve with CV of 40. So first important concept in control valve sizing can be cleared with an example of a car. So let's take here a simple car and the accelerator here and let's try to plot a graph. So when you put a graph let the accelerator or the pedal be put on the x axis and the speed which is the most important parameter of the car put in y axis. Now when I put the full pedal I completely press the pedal there has to be a speed which the car can run. Our example it runs at 100 miles per hour. Similarly this can be compared to a valve. The pedal can can be compared to the open and closed position and here we'll plot the graph on the x-axis from fully closed to fully open valve and on the y-axis CV which is the flow capacity is one of the most important parameters of the control valve. So when the valve is completely open there has to be a CV that it can provide or the maximum flow that it can provide. Now this is a very important parameter in control valve sizing which is called as the rated parameter. So basically this 100 miles per hour is the rated speed of the car and 50 CV what you see here is basically the rated CV of the control valve so at the control valve full open position what is the maximum flow capacity is defined by rated CV now let us put our car in actual process conditions or you can say road conditions now if you see here can your car always run at 100 miles per hour no the road conditions will greatly define the speed of the car for example, when you're coming from office, you might have huge traffic coming in. And here, even though your car can run at 100 miles per hour, your minimum speed might be something like 30 miles per hour. Then you might have some good cases. Traffic is not that much. It's normal traffic that you usually experience. So here you might have some normal speed. Let's say your car runs at 50 miles per hour here. And finally, you have your good day. It's basically in holiday and there is least amount of traffic and here your car can run at 75 miles per hour. Similarly, your control wall also when it's put in a line, it has to go through process conditions. So it will have something called as minimum, normal and maximum conditions. Let us try to size the control valve and the car together. So we remembered in X axis there is going to be in control wall, it's going to be the valve opening versus CV and for the car, it is going to be pedal position versus speed. Now first thing is we will know the minimum traffic conditions we saw the car required was 30 miles per hour. Normal traffic requires somewhere around 50 miles per hour. Hour and maximum traffic requires a speed of 75 miles per hour so at full pedal position if I have a car which runs at 100 miles per hour this should suffice my all the requirements of minimum normal and maximum traffic conditions similarly when you put the process condition in the software you get to know the minimum CV normal CV and maximum CV now you have to choose a control in such a way that it has to fulfill all of these cases. So let's take a control valve with a CV at 100% of the valve opening to be 50. So your minimum maximum normal should cover. For example 37 CV covers at 75% of opening, normal covers at 50% of the opening and minimum covers at 30% of the opening. So this is a good engineering sizing done on for this control valve. We get to our first rule of control valve sizing which is in terms of the capacity, the rated capacity of the control valve the calculated CV must be within 20 to 80 percent of the rated CV. We will try to develop an algorithm so that we can remember this at the end of the video. So the calculated CV has to be when you put all the process parameters you get to know CV at minimum normal maximum conditions that should be within 20 to 80 percent of the rated CV. If you are not able to get you have to try to tweak the size model etc but the size should not be too less. It should be at least one size less than the line or maximum it can go with half but it is preferred not to make the control valve too short why we will get to know soon but as soon as we get to this we will get to step number two of control valve sizing 
But before that, did you have this question with you that why should we keep it between 20 to 80 percent? That is the biggest problem that the industry is facing. We have a lot of oversized control valves. Let's try to understand this example. So in this example, instead of our car, we have example of Ferrari. Now let's try to plot a graph with respect to Ferrari. So at full pedal, you would have a speed of 1000 miles per hour. But if you remember our example, we had a speed of 20 miles per hour, 50 and 75 miles per hour in minimum, normal, maximum traffic conditions. If you notice here, this entire capacity of the car is wasted capacity only 10% of the capacity is used. It is not just that you're wasting money, but at the same time, it is so difficult to control the pedal where your speed will be at 20 miles per hour or 15 miles per hour. So for that reason, this is an example of an oversized car. Similarly, in valve, you will have the same condition if you would have taken a valve with a rated capacity of 200 CV. So all your conditions would have been just in 15, 12 and 20 percent of the opening. So you see here, this is a classic example of an oversized control valve where this area is completely waste capacity and the control valve has a very small range of control. It is very difficult for the control valve to give a linear output in such a small range of control. Similarly, this is a classic example of an undersized control valve. Here the rated capacity is 120, but you require a CV of 150. So this area, you will never get this flow from the control valve because the control valve is already open at 100%. So it will not be able to give you the required flow rate at maximum flow. Now let us look at the step two for control valve sizing. So before we get that, the step one was what? We calculated in CV, we put all the process conditions, we get minimum, normal, maximum CV. We see that the CV must be between 20 to 80 percent of the rated CV. We do that, then we go to step number two. Step number two is you check for cavitation or flashing is present, for example. Cavitation is far more harmful, so we'll have to figure out whether it is applicable to your service or not. Let us assume that you have cavitation in your service. As soon as you have cavitation in your service, that does not mean we have to take the most stringent step. You need to look whether it is very severe or not. We have an entire lecture available on the channel called as Cavitation Index as per ISA RP75, which basically helps you to distinguish between when is the cavitation severe or not. Let's assume that your cavitation is not severe, then you might take no action or maybe there is just flashing. You might put a stellated trim. So basically it is hardening the trim material so that it can sustain in the minor damages if your cavitation is severe then there are a lot of options available there is an entire lecture on cavitation solutions which are available but mostly while sizing a control valve you will be selecting either single stage trim or various multi-stage trim depending on how severity is the cavitation so two stage three stage etc and again you will run the calculation to see whether cavitation is present or not then you get to step number three that is you check for noise Usually in projects it is 85 dBA, it depends sometimes it is 90 dBA, sometimes it is 80 dBA depending on the project requirements of how much noise to be done. Once it is done then you might have to see if it's yes then you go for various treatments like source and path treatment and again you need to run the calculations and check whether still noise is present or not. Once this is done you get to the basic sizing done but let us look at one of the, the most important source treatment for noise which is we use a basic trim called as low noise trim but what does this low noise trim do it basically tries to make the frequency go so high that it won't damage your hairs for example one vendor which is very famous for this is Fisher so you will see whisper trims available here so trim 1 trim 2 and whisper flow are various trims available why do you have various type of trims because of the how much noise it can reduce so for example trim 1 can reduce 18 dBA trim 2 can reduce 30 dBA and even trim 3 can go up till 40 dBA so depending on your application of how much noise you need to reduce you can choose the particular kind of trim. If you are liking this video, then you would love this ebook that I have written on control valve mastery. This ebook on control valve mastery is completely free. It has various parameters like material selection, valve sizing, valve design, and also valve standards. The link is given in the description below. And if you would want to know all the videos that I have referenced, the link is given here as well as in the description so you can learn all of those lectures and have a better understanding of control valve. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please let me know what are your comments and subscribe so that we can meet next Saturday and learn something new again.